I'm in a position now where it's the best I've ever been, but I have gone through hell. It's okay to ask for help. The more you feed the ego, the stronger the... There is this stigma where people feel like this is the only way. There is no one way to do health. There is no one way to be successful. Let it all go. Let it all go and just allow the moment to be the moment. I love that. Who cares? Eat that burger. That's fine. You can eat the whole thing plus a dessert. Does not mean you're not a fitness trainer. Welcome to the Queendom. We are here with the beautiful Christy Swaddling, a fitness trainer, and also you have your own podcast, beautiful girl, Yo Balance Co. You are here with Keys to the Queendom. Hello, sexy lady. How are you today? Good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited for this podcast. Uh, we were actually just chatting about sleeping in and you woke up at nine. <laughs> I, I actually got very passionate because I thought she pressed record. So like I was literally going on for at least five, 10 minutes, just rattling on, like really passionate. <laughs> and she goes, by the way, I haven't pressed record yet. <laughs> Which, by the way, I just did not want to stop you because you were oh. going in such a beautiful story. Story, um, <laughs> but again, I think that just happens when you do these, I guess, podcast episodes. It becomes a conversation that we fully forget that we're recording. Yeah, that there's other people listening. Hi guys, we're just Hi. having a good chat, good good catch up. It's been um, ages since I've seen you though. No, I know. Like, well, I was still doing fitness and EHP stuff when you and I bumped into each other, and that's I know. How I- love you and I've just loved watching your journey and, and you've you done know. a full transformation and might I add everything that you're about now is just so goddamn relatable thank you it's beautiful thank I think that's a big thing that I really want to bring forward and I know you're so big on when it comes to being relatable and you know building your empire and you know being who you need to be that's been a big discussion you and I have just been having before um, because very often on social media, there's this perception of like what has to be perfect, right? And you were just expressing that to me before. Exactly, yeah. And like even me, me just waking up at 9 a.m. If I did this maybe a few years back, I would have put myself down. I would have felt lazy. I would have felt like I wasn't succeeding. But I I wake up at 9 a.m. only this morning. Look, it's usually 8 to 7.30. But I knew I needed to sleep in. But I also can get shit done within that time. And this is something that I speak about um, within my podcast is there is no one way to do health. There is no one way to do to be successful. And we, we are exposed to social media and all these people who – live a certain routine, their morning routine, their nighttime routine, and you feel as though that you do need to live up to that in order to be a certain person, be at a certain level of success. But it's so not the case. And for me, for example, I now have a family. So I have my stepson, I have my partner who I also need to take care of. So I need to be making sure that I have a long lasting amount of energy throughout that day, not just my morning. I need energy until 9 10 p.m. at night. So I've understood, okay, cool. Actually sleeping in works for me. And this is what I find that this is something that I actually have always personally struggled with is never really asking myself what is going to work for me and kind of just mimicking what is working for everyone else and hoping for the best. How, like that just one brings up so many elements with not just like yourself but fitness and habits and routine and success you know there is this stigma where people feel like this is the only way to have health or to be Mm. healthy or to be successful and for the fact that you are saying that you have basically had to adapt and pivot based on your lifestyle and you've made it work is speaking to the choirs to so many women and men probably listening that it gets to be what you want it to be exactly and for you sharing about your family, babe, like tell me more. For those who haven't, and I guess, known your journey, you know, where did you begin like from the very beginning to where you are now? And I know you're traversing through a lot of transitions yourself, but what's um, what's been the biggest thing that you've experienced that brought you to where you are now? Look, I'm a very vanilla girl with my life. So it's super normal. 
but it's also very chaotic throughout my life has been super chaotic. And I'm in a position now where it's the best I've ever been, but I've gone through hell, literally hell and back when through, throughout my teenage years. And I've had struggles after struggles after struggles. And it definitely did stem from um, an un- undiagnosed ADHD, which then was diagnosed along with anorexia nervosa. So I was diagnosed this, diagnosed, diagnosed this at um, 17 years old. So at 17, I was diagnosed, I was in and out of hospital till I was 19. So this basically took up my entire teenage life and then started my recovery healing journey in my early 20s. I'm now 26 and it's probably been within the last three years where I could say I've been fully recovered mentally, physically. It is something that takes over everything. When I'm talking about your organs, your bones, hormones, everything. And in saying that though, actually, there's a lot of um, physical stuff I'm still working with when it comes down to my hormones, when it comes down to my bowel, all of that. So there's a lot of things that'll take years and years and years of fixing. And throughout this period of um, trying to recover, I suffered severely with irritable bowel syndrome. I had so many issues with my gut. So it was kind of like I was trying so hard to get better and there was just so many hurdles on in the road stopping me. And it was, it, it took a huge toll on my mental state and my relationship towards myself and that's kind of when also my um, healing and my personal development came into play. Um, I I think the huge turning point for me for recovery was actually when I was in my hospital bed. My dad, who was my best friend at the time, came in and he gave me um, a book to read and it was, you would probably know it, The Power of Now yeah, by Eckhart Tolle. Is yeah. it Tolle or Toll? I can never pronounce it, but I think it's Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle. Or Tolle. But it was the power of now. And this sentence that really hit me hard, um, it was to do with ego. And it's something along the lines of the more you feed the ego, the stronger the ego will get. And I really related the ego to my illness at the time. So the more I'm feeding into my illness, the bigger my illness is going to get. So I, it was a huge turning point because I was like, oh my God, like the more I act upon what my illness needs me to do, the more, more my illness is going to grow. So then I also understood the less I act upon it, the more it's going to shrink. And so I really stood by that and I learned to challenge myself. I learned to make action. And this is kind of when I was like, holy shit, like this personal development stuff is actually like real, (laughs) like it's kind of cool. (laughs) So I just ended up doing a lot of, a lot of research, a lot of books. Um, I don't really think audio books were a big thing back then. I wish I knew because I would have probably listened to a lot more, but yeah, I read a lot of books and I started to get into things like meditation, yoga, and really actually just spent the first few years of my recovery alone. Um, didn't really hang with many people, just really knew I needed this time to sit back and sit with my trauma rather than trying to keep myself occupied. Mm -hmm. And that is so important when you do have something there that you do need to heal or you have that trauma there, you actually need to sit with it and get uncomfortable with it. And I spent a whole year getting uncomfortable and yeah, it sucked. It really did suck, but it's got me to where I am now. And I'm so grateful for that past me of going through that pain because sometimes what is uncomfortable right now is going to benefit you in the future. And sometimes what is comfortable right now may not benefit you in the future. And I really stood by that within that year of healing myself. And now I'm just at a point in my life where I'm really business focused. I'm still having a bit of issues when it comes down to my gut and hormones, but it's something that I'm really, really trying to balance out. And I've kind of taken a step back from um, the whole fitness side of it when it comes down to counting macros and 
training intense, like intensively all week, I really took a step back on all of that to actually find what is healthy for me and start applying more of them things, you know, like resting in the morning, putting my training in the afternoon, doing things like Pilates, yoga, meditation, taking time off tracking. And that was huge for me to kind of de-stress. And um, yeah, a part of balancing out my hormones is finding all these stressful triggers. And that was huge, was actually limiting um, tracking, um, reducing my training. And so now I'm definitely at a place where I'm just so at peace and it was just finding what I was applying in my everyday life that was causing me that more stress that has been affecting my hormones and my gut. Um, and I am probably within the past month, I've finally had a place where I feel as though I've reached that point where I'm like actually getting so much better. And I feel as though my gut is at a point where it was maybe a year ago. I wasn't going through as much stress. I think during COVID and everything, I had the best gut health. I wasn't bloated. I didn't have any uncomfortability, no um, IBS triggers. So I'm trying to get myself back to that point. And I finally do feel as though that I am. But in saying that, within the past maybe three years, I have had a lot more on my plate that are going to cause them triggers. Like I also have my stepson who I take care of full time. Like I have only, you know, I've just learned how to become a mum within the past three years. And that in itself is, is stress. (laughs) Yeah, it is. And just understanding that your life now does not revolve around you Mm. and your routine is going to change. And this is something that Caden, who my stepson has been a huge, huge growth, um, growth opportunity for me because prior towards having the boys in my life, I was not selfish, but just very fixated on my routine, on how life should be. I was a perfectionist and I thought that's what I needed to do in order to be successful. I needed to have a perfect routine. I needed to be, have my everything, you know, pinpointed, my to-do list, my calendar, everything had to be perfect. And if a morning didn't go the way that I needed it to go, I would get frustrated. I would get angry. I'd get upset. I'd get annoyed and I'd feel like the whole day is ruined. And now having a child and my partner, who I obviously have to take care of, Caden, I know that my day isn't going to just revolve around me and he may wake up and anything can happen. He needs to go to the doctor or he wants to go pick up a friend before school or he has sport. My whole day is going to change and that I've learned to just be okay with that and it's just a part of life now and but a few years back that would completely stress me out and rather than actually coming into that with open arms and then making it work I would have actually just been like well fuck this it's ruining my routine and now the whole day's ruined and I would have been in a completely negative headspace for the rest of the day do you um you know the perfect the perfectionism thing and I say this because it relates so much to what I was like. And I don't know if it's because growing up dancing, acting routine at dance school till mm. I was like eight o'clock, structure, routine, everything. And it kind of became almost like if I wasn't number one or if I wasn't the best, I'd be a failure. And th- that perfectionism drove me into this, basically the, the fatal of feeling like if that wasn't the case, that I wasn't number one. I was a failure and I feel like that resonates a lot with women in our generation who want to be successful, but even for yourself, Mm. right? A hundred percent. And yeah, when it comes down to, you know, winning or having a competitive mindset, that's when it's really important to understand that all you need to do is be better than you were yesterday, literally. And it really can be hard, like the whole competitive side, like I was definitely thinking about competing last year and it's something that I was like it's so it is so hard to put yourself into that space because you could be doing the best that you've ever done in your whole entire life and then all it has to take is for you to come a place and all your self-belief in yourself just goes down the fucking hole and it, it does it really does suck because at the end of the day all all that matters is you just being the best version of yourself not a fucking medal. And how did it all 
begin for you when you traversed over through through the healing you know you built your fitness business you have a beautiful partner and a stepson like did you see all of this coming were you like fuck I don't know this was going to be happening in my life (laughs) I I've always wanted um like what we're just talking about before I've we are very like what's the word um constantly needing yeah. movement change progression like constantly needing tasks to fulfill us and I've always been like that I've never been one to just be able to sit down and do nothing yeah yeah I've never even if I would when I was you know younger and all our mates would hang out would kind of just sit on the lounge and just be on our phones I remember that would stress me the fuck out I used to be like oh, what am I doing like I should I don't know like can I go do something anything just I'll fold something and I'll start to actually just clean my friend's houses because I'm someone who just constantly needs something to be working towards or to doing something and I don't like wasting time but I've been able to understand that movement isn't always like progress Mm -hmm. so I used to try to keep myself occupied all the time and I have definitely learned to slow down and start to move with more of a purpose and yeah, like I've, I've always wanted to own my own business and have a family and it is, it's great. It's stressful. It is so stressful and you have to be prepared for that, but it is, it's great. And it's everything that I have ever wanted. I have um, been thrown a few business hurdles within the past two years. I would say there's been a project that we've been working on for two years and it's probably been the most stressful experience of my entire life. And I'm so excited to be out of it, right? And then look back at me now and be like, oh, she did it. But I'm still going through it. And that's just a part of business. Are you allowed to share what that is? Have you shared about it? No, I haven't. I haven't. It is, it's to do with fitness, it's to do with health. And me and my partner are actually working on it. Um, And we are dealing with developers and it's just been all over the place. And we actually lost a lot of money because of like development development side and just being fucked around really so we've been really scared to make the next step but it's something that I I literally said to my partner last night I was like I don't have a plan b because I don't want one yeah this plan a is what's gonna happen and it's at a point where it's like if I cannot achieve this I'm going to do something completely different. I'm going to become a fucking interior designer, Joel. Like that's at the point it is. That's how passionate I am about this certain project. And because he was, he was like, what if this happens? What if this happens? Like what's our plan B? And I just said, we don't have one. Nope. (laughs) We do not have a plan B. We have plan A. And if plan A isn't working like this, then we'll do plan A like this. And that's something that I've always been like, I kind of get very passionate about something and, I've just learned to make it fucking work. Mm. I find that that could be my partner's the same, by the way. And there's always, uh, you know, if this doesn't work, let's do something else. And maybe you and I are so similar in that sense where when we do move with purpose and when we set our mind to that one thing, it's like, guys, watch out because I'm not going to let anything back down from me achieving what I really want. So you've always had this driving force within you. Did you ever get pulled aside by someone that ever like noticed that about you because I think it's a power that you definitely definitely is a power um I've definitely been told that it's not a good trait many times and so that can be really hard um in the sense where people people make it out that you're someone who just you're so narrow-minded where you're not open for other opportunities or you don't like to listen to people, but it's hard when you have a passion and you have a feeling and you're so like, this is what I want. And even for my partner, for example, he's someone who he would be like, yeah, but what if this doesn't work? Like he's a, he's a realist. He is a realist. He works in the mines, like he's his own business before as well. And, but he's just a damn right realist. So he'll be like, if this doesn't work, we'll have to do this. And I'm like, no, but this is what I've envisioned. This is what I've manifested. And he's like, yeah, but, manifest 
He's like, what, what do you mean? He's like, no, it, what if it doesn't work? And I'm like, it will. He's like, how do you know? I'm like, I'm manifesting it. So like, it, yeah, I'm like, I still have my I've envisioned it. It's on my vision board. So I definitely can be like that. And it can be hard when people don't really understand um, that it's you not agreeing with them or you not wanting to listen to their way. Mm-hmm. It's it's because you're so passionate about something that you're like, okay, your way isn't wrong. My way isn't right. There is no wrong and right. This is just what I'm wanting. Mm. But I find, and I say this to a lot of my clients and anyone listening, you know, there's, there's these 1% of people and they're the entrepreneurs and they're the people that like they have a vision and they know within their heart and soul and gut, like while other people may put on a bit of a, you know, it may not work out or you may be crazy or, hey, like it's all well and good to have these big audacious dreams, but you're the type of person that when it actually fucking happens, you're going to turn around and go like, I just stuck to my intuition and gut. Mm. And so for me, I really want to hear from you what's been moments in your life where your intuition really like you stuck to it and it all came about. Hey guys, real quick. Have you ever been stressed out or stuck on a problem you just can't seem to figure out and then a friend or a mentor comes along with like a fresh perspective and shows you a solution that completely changes the game for you? I'm smiling right now as I say this because I know I've had a ton of these moments while building my businesses and remembering back to all the people I have been helped by, which gets me so excited. So I want to pass on the information here and give you guys a favor to build this Queendom community. You know, whatever platform you are listening on, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button and tune in every Wednesday because you just never know when you will hear that special something that completely changes the game for you. And when it happens, make sure you leave behind five stars so we know our efforts are making an impact. I love you guys. Let's get back into it. I think there's been a good balance in I've stuck to it and it hasn't gone the way that I've planned or I've stuck to it and it has worked. There has been a really good balance, but with each opportunity I've grown from or I've learned something from or it was meant to happen. Um, I can't really think of any, oh, there, yes, I can. So probably when um, I were, was invited to an event and it was in Cronulla Beach um, and I went to the event and I was like, oh, my God, I really love this place. Like, it's actually so nice. I want to move here. And it's three hours from my hometown, my family, my best friends, my roommates, but I just felt like this is somewhere that I wanted to be and really wanted to be and my business was going to thrive. I was going to thrive. And um, I remember just saying to my housemates, I want to move. And they're like, what do you mean? Like I was only fresh when it come down to social media and, you know, really – um, the stability when it come down to finances and the rent there was not cheap. And I was like, I am just going to make it work. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to try harder when it comes down to businesses, collabs, sponsorships. I'm going to make it work. Like it was quadruple the amount that I was paying where I was in my hometown. And, you know, I had my friends, my family, they were like, one, it's stupid. It's expensive. You, you don't know anyone there. Like what is the whole point of this? And I just was like, it feels right it feels what I need to do Mm. um and then I ended up getting approved for the apartment that I wanted and in three weeks I packed my entire house and I left and I loved it I did I really did love it and I learned to make it work when it came down to rent when it came down to um even just finding new friends like I was starting from scratch and I'm someone who, when it comes down to the community that I'm around, it's so important to have the right people. And my hometown just wasn't it for me. It wasn't. And that was a huge reason in why I made that move. It was like, I have friends, but there's no one I fully connect with. Mm -hmm. There's no one that makes me feel my best self. And I was really, really searching for that. And also searching for love. Um, And I moved to Cronulla. I made such amazing, amazing friends that I fully connected with. And I actually met Joel 
um, through mutual friends in Cronulla. So it's something that definitely needed to happen. I needed to kind of get outside my comfort zone and make that step and do what everyone was telling me to do, to move out of my small home hometown and to just go where I felt good where I felt right and I did, I made it work when it came down to rent, finances, um, my business and, yeah, I made an amazing group of friends. I met Joel and then it wasn't a few years. I only really stayed there for two and a bit years and I've ended up moving now where Joel is, so we're in Newcastle at the moment. Oh, my God. I mean, you said it just beautifully before, right, babe? Manifestation is all well and good when you have the goal and vision, but you took every opportunity to take action towards it. But what I really loved what you said just before was there was something that wasn't feeling right where you were living before, even the community you were there with, the friends and whatnot. Do you feel like that comes about every now and then in your life where you kind of go through like a shift or like a transition and it's like, okay, something doesn't feel right, something needs to change. And are you Mm. going through that now? 100%. I definitely am going through that now um when it comes down to business when it comes down to connections I'm going through a point where I'm like okay cool a few months ago this was great for me but it's not actually feeling what I need right now um with business as well it is really hard because it's a project that we have been working on for two years and I'm so impatient with it and it's still probably a few months in the works um and it, yeah, it's really got me to a point where I'm like, okay, cool. Like I need something to work on. And I really believe in these parts of your life where you're, you're not feeling the best and you're wanting more to use it as an opportunity. Yeah. Even where, with, when it comes down to your friendships, if you feel as though you're not getting fulfilled after the conversations that you're having with your friends or you, you're feeling as though they're not putting the effort in that you're putting in, understand that and either take a step back, work on yourself or put yourself out there with other people. And for me, that something that always works is to um, take a step back and to work on myself that little bit more and the opportunity, it'll come when it's, when it's needed because at the end of the day, if you're a bit stressed or if you're not being the best friend for other friends, then you're not going to find your people because you're not in at the moment. So it's really about getting yourself to a point where you are ready to meet your people. Mm. And that's something that always helps because I definitely do. I've gone through so many phases in life when it comes down to my friends and I am only young, but I've definitely gone through phases because I am someone who I, I look for, I need the best like I need the best when it comes down to friends because I'm someone who I love my alone time so much that if I'm hanging with you I want you to make me feel good I want to feel good around you and I want you to have the same I want it to benefit each other we said that just before babe you know when it came to um what we're traversing right now in business and whatnot it's like there's so much going on so when we have the, the, the certain amount of energy when we have for people you know I actually feel this is so big at the moment I really just don't want to be around people that bitch or no. I'm not one to put I don't mind if people are feeling emotional and negative because I'm always big on you know supporting them and helping them through that but if the people that you're surrounding yourself with that are bringing you down are in victim mentality they're bitching they're gossiping like you and I said it just the other day like just before we don't have fucking time for that shit. Literally. And it can be hard, especially as a woman and, you know, in, in your 20s, whether it's early or late, it is really hard because that's what majority of women connect over. Mm. And it's it's not normal. It's not okay. And I've definitely learnt um, because a lot of my friends now are actually mums. Mums of four you know, and mums are three, mums are four, they've got two under two, they're busy. They ain't got no time to talk about anyone else and they have been the best of best connections because, honestly, they don't know fucking Sherry next door. They don't care. They're too busy with their own household, everything that's happening, where they don't want to talk about anyone. And these connections that I have made with mums as well, they are so caring. Mm. they they listen they're not waiting for their turn to talk they're a mum they're there to listen mm-hmm. and 
I have like since you know embracing motherhood and making friends with mums, my expectation with friends are high because <laughs> I'm like mums are great. Like they literally like my friends will be like, "Have you put sunscreen on?" And I'm like, "Oh, um, mm, no." And they're like, oh, "I got some. Don't worry." Have you eaten today? Have you had enough water? Like they care for you so much. And I'm like, oh, this is like, this is so good. And as well, if they say something, it's happening. Mm. So that is something, something for me that is so important in friendships is keeping your word. Yeah. If you say you're going to come on Saturday, you're coming. You know, like obviously if something something comes up, that's fine. But the people that just say yes to everything and then no show, no message, mm -hmm. that to me is a sense of trust and trust is so important in friendships. Like I, if you say that you can, you know, pick me up at the station on the Thursday, I want to know that you're actually going to be there. And it is, it's like, like I said, my, <laughs> so high, so high since having mum friends because they just have a care, they have, a sense of purpose as well, take like keeping four small humans alive. Like that is literally their purpose. That they do not have time to bitch. You know, I really there's a t TV show called Working Mums. I don't know if you've watched it, but me and my girlfriend, she's got a child, and I don't just yet. But I watch these women on that show, and anyone listening, definitely get on board because it's such a fucking funny show. But I really value and connect, and really find mums who are so empowered but also are there for other people but are there for themselves too. And they they don't use the fact that they have a kid as an excuse to, you know, not be able to do X, Y, and Z. Mm. But the ones that I really, really feel like yourself, you have a stepson, yet you still have the opportunity to do so much for other people. It's just navigating and changing how the course goes. And I really love, like, hearing when mums do speak about their world and their life and their, their children, like, that is something I want one day in my life, you know, and seeing yourself with Joel and Jaden. Do I say Jaden? Caden. Caden, close. Kaden. Close. I, so you want to be a mummy? I do. Aww. I I've said that on here. I think I've said it on here before, but I'm 34 this year, Christy. So I don't know if you're on this journey as well, whether you want to have a kid with um, Joel too, but like I just want to make – every opportunity possible to be where I want to be. So I give my future child the life I never had. Yeah. And that's something that has stuck to me for so long. Jordan and I did a, um, he's doing a current five-year plan. I've never done one before, but in his five-year plan, apparently we're meant to be getting engaged next year. And then kids. <laughs> I love that. He's like, told you this. So like in, in my five-year plan I'm I know. Proposing next year. I'm like, let's, <laughs> let's see this happening. Yeah. But even like, maybe in the next two years kids will happen do you think for That's you good. you're still young like I know I'm getting nearly mid mid 30s but yeah. yeah I I would like to start trying at the end of this year like my whole like I think as well when you're young it's scary to um have a child and to you know embrace that because your whole life is changing but for me I'm already a mum so like the only thing that's really going to change is obviously waking up for this baby and changing its nappy yeah. and getting shit and wee on me. Like obviously having a newborn equivalent to a 12 year old is completely different, but I don't go out. I cook our dinners every night. I'm literally work from home, able to do our, you know, our cleaning. I'm able to do all of that. So I literally live the life of a mum already. It's just about obviously having that newborn and having a child with Joel is something that I have dreamt of for years, haven't been ready for it, but I've wanted it. And I, I, I'm so clucky at the moment. It is not even funny. Like all my, you know, all my friends are pregnant or they've got children. And I'm like, no, this is, I can't, I can't see anyone. I'm just too clucky. <laughs> It's and so you're like, bad. Oh, you're baby now, and you're like, wait till the end of the year. Yeah, literally. And as well, I would like my business stress to be out of the way. So we've also done a five year plan, um, which you yeah, I didn't know was a thing often. either. You need to hang out more often. I, I know. know. I didn't know it was a thing, and Joel and I did it, and I was like, okay, this is fun. Like, this is cool. It's like a little vision board on a piece of paper, and we did our five year plan. Um, and we did it a few months ago and I like kind of like sat him down. I was like, oh, look, 
I actually want like, cause we'll plan to have a baby next year. And mm-hmm. um, like, like I said before, he's a realist. So I was like, I think I want to swap things over in our five year plan. He goes, what do you mean? He was like, so oh, stressed. No. He was like, that's our plan though. And I was like, yeah, but like, <laughs> we can swap it, can't we? And he's like, you can't just do that, Chris. You can't just change it. Like that's what we're working towards. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't know it was set in stone. I just thought we were envisioning. Like, <laughs> I was like, what do you yeah, yeah, he's like, this is our five year plan. Like, he's a very realist. Like, he's a dad, just you know, mind work, just realist. And so, like, having our five year plan has been really good because I'm the type of person I put all my eggs in one basket. and I'm like, I want it all at once. Like, yeah. I want the business, the car, the house, the baby. I want it all this year. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday, to be honest. Yesterday, yeah. Why don't we have it? Literally, yes. The five-year plan, right, babe? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's good as when you do do the five-year plan as well, you um, put into perspective that you can have it all in a realistic period of time and also set yourself up for, you know, things like we understood that, okay, we either want to travel this year or next year. Mm. Like it's depending on obviously having a child and, marriage and all of that so it has been really good because we've been able to understand that it can be done but it may not be done for another four years yeah and that's right you got engaged recently too yes I did last year um we are we sussed out venues um a few weeks ago when we we're in Bali because we want to get married in Bali yeah it's oh, it's the best place yeah, honestly fair. it is so lovely like Joel honestly wants to move there. And I'm like, look, I don't know about that. I always say that to Jordan, but I've yeah. got two cats, which is basically children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, it, yeah, it, it, it can make, make it hard as well because, like, you can't just pack up your life and move. And that's something that I had to um, learn. Be, being a mum, you can't just pack up and move. And I'm someone who I'm like, let's, let's move here. Let's go to Queensland. Let's go to Bali. Like, I have moved so many times in my life because I'm very much like that and I get really sick of um, an environment very quickly and it's something that I've learned with Caden that he, he's got school. Like, yeah. He literally has his friends. He has school. We've got our doctors, our dentists. Like we can't just move. Yeah. And this is something that I have had to understand when becoming a mum that it, it, it isn't easy and being spontaneous and making your little, you know, your weekend trips with your friends, you can't do anymore. You, it takes so much pre-planning. Yeah. Yeah. So the five-year plan gives you a bit more of the expectations. You know what you can do in order to get to, I guess, moving to Bali. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like what you said, what you need to sacrifice. Like, you know, we have started with our savings, our mortgage, all of that stuff. Like it does put into perspective so you can actually – be realistic about it and, you know, put your, put your ducks, you know, in a, in a row. Is that what it is? Ducks in a row or low or I was I like close? So. But I will go with that. I mean, look, I can't even pronounce Eckhart Tolle's name. Yes, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, we were just discussing that we swear to God we are dyslexic, but we both host podcasts. Yes, and spelling and pronunciation for me. Pronunciation, pronunciation. Yeah. People out. pick me up all the time and, like, not only do I have a podcast, I also have a TikTok and a YouTube channel. So, like, people are picking up my grandma all the time. And I'm like, look, are you here for my grandma? Are you here because I'm funny and can cook? Like, honestly. It's not a spelling school. So yeah, you know? it is. Yeah. I'm sorry if it's affecting you. I actually have to ask, babe, because obviously having, like, being in a relationship, there's a bit of an age difference and also having, you know, Caden as your stepson, like, how was – like what were your be- biggest lessons that you had with not just with Joel but with Caden as well? Yeah, I think definitely so, like what I mentioned before in the sense where it's not about me anymore. Like yeah. I literally have to take care of other humans and to not – to let go a little bit, to not have such a perfect routine and such a clean environment and just learn to let go – and this has been a huge healing journey, these boys. They have been a huge healing and growth opportunity for me because I have learned that I can't just wake up at 5 a.m. and then just head straight to the gym and then come home and be able to make my breakfast and get straight on to work. It's not like that. There's, you know, just even this morning I had to get Caden up. I had to do Joel's work lunches. I had laundry I needed to do. Um, the, I had to put the dogs outside. Like there was actually things that I had to do before I started my own day. And that is something that did take 
quite a bit. You know, having responsibilities took a lot to get used to because I was used to just me, myself and I, and having my own responsibilities and having everything perfect and doing my own routine and getting to the gym when it suited me. But now it's completely changed and it's for my family. And that is something that is just inevitable. And if you were to give advice to women listening around navigating that, you know, it's obviously like there's so many pieces. There's the healing piece from your, you know, eating disorder to the perfectionism piece to even just like navigating being a mum now and having a business. Like they all kind of intertwine if you think about it. Mm. 100%. Yeah, they do. They do. And it really does come down to one, it's okay to ask for help, Mm. Mm. which is so important. Like, Because we are fucking superwoman. Like, we are literally superwoman. But even even that, like, we can get exhausted and that is completely fine. And you do feel as though that because as a mom, as a woman, we can, we are, we are the cook, we're the cleaner, we're, we still work, we are the taxi, we do it all. And that takes a huge toll on you, especially mentally. Like, you've got a thousand things on your mind. Like, Make my head compared to Joel's head is completely different. Like we'll both be on the lounge and he's watching TV. I'm thinking about what we're having for dinner. I'm remembering if I've put the load of washing on. I am trying to think about what I need to do for work, emails that I've sent out, Caden's dentist appointment. Like my head is just naturally full of so much stuff. So we are going to get exhausted. We Mm -hmm. are. And it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to have a step back doesn't make you a bad mum. it doesn't make you lazy it just means that you are prioritizing you your energy levels your mental health so you can come back a better mum, a better wife a better fiance a better girlfriend whatever it is that should be your main focus because at the end of the day no your partner your children are not going to care if the low if the laundry hasn't been folded they're going to care how present you are they're going to care how you showed up how happy you are that's what your family and your friends care about Mm, I love that babe especially with the happiness piece because it all comes down to that you know and this comes back to you and your healing and you putting yourself first and that's that in that sense because when you lead with happiness and love everything starts to fall into place Mm. um you said something to me before and that was around your goal for this month I think it was around alcohol because like you know me (laughs) I love my wine same same so like I don't know if you can see behind me but this is my little yes yeah so I am two weeks in yeah great sober um I'm someone who I love my wine like I'm talking about half a bottle a night like love my wine okay yeah thank you okay so anyway so (laughs) love my wine Okay, firstly, I want to say that I did make this um, goal to be sober for 75 days. I do want to add, I was extremely hungover with the 75 days. (laughs) Why I didn't just say don't drink Monday to Friday, beyond me. (laughs) Yeah, don't know. Yeah, but, you know, I made it and I've... I've stuck to it so far and I feel really good. The main reason why I personally wanted to do this was one, to challenge my self-discipline and two, because I'm actually trying to put on some weight. I am working with my trainer. We're trying to, you know, build some muscle. And unfortunately, um, with alcohol, it's, yeah, it doesn't go hand in hand when it comes down to muscle growth. So I have tried to limit that as well because as well I was having it so often where it was affecting my appetite and I'm needing to obviously increase my appetite for muscle growth. Um, and throughout this experience, I have noticed that I 100% was using alcohol, um, as a reliant when it comes down to my stress, I would rely on it deeply in the sense where if I was stressed, the only thing I'd think about was, oh, I just need, I need some wine. I'm just can't wait to go home and have some wine. Like I wouldn't actually manage it. I wouldn't learn to just sit, address why I'm stressed. I would just be like, fuck this. I'm just going to go have a wine. I'll feel heaps better after a wine. And I, I did. I did feel better. I'll, I'll, I've added that one in. But I've never learned why is it that I'm stressed. 
You know, I never asked mm-hmm. myself, why am I stressed? What can I do about this? How can I manage this better? Mm-hmm. Because I didn't need to because I knew I could go home and fucking have me wine. <laughs> Because it just makes everything go away. Yeah, it it does. <laughs> it does. It really does. But okay. there, there does need to be a time where you're learning to manage it. So we're near at the end of the episode. I know I don't want it to end either. And I love you guys so much for tuning in every week and coming to this journey with me. But the good news is it doesn't have to end here. If you've gotten value from today, I have something really special I want to share with you. Now, most people are very dedicated to learning from podcasts or books, but when it comes to taking the action required to make these ambitions come true, they retreat back to their comfort zone and listen to another podcast. But I know that there is a small group of queens listening right now that are hungry for more. You want complete freedom over how you spend your time and money, and you want to be able to do it from anywhere in the world. I understand you. I was you. And now I have complete freedom over my time, location and money. And I did it all with my social media blueprint. And if you are part of the group that takes action towards your dream life, I have included an exclusive link for you to jump on board below at 50% off. I appreciate you queens all so much. Now let's finish this one with a bang. You know what, babe? I really love that because... Um, look, I'll be honest, like I love red wine too. And I've had in the past experience where it became almost like, okay, I'll wait till Friday to have a wine. Then it was like, okay, Thursday, it's technically, you know, the weekend, right? And then that led to Wednesday and then there's Monday nights. I'd have a red wine with Jordan and have, you know, a, you know, just a de-stress kind of yeah. thing. And what I've noticed that that brought for me was, I wouldn't say addictive behaviors, but it could lead to it if I had continued on with the pattern. 100%. 100%. I just want to commemorate you for fucking bringing this forward because one, there wasn't an issue. So to the point where there was addictions and you were needing it, but you brought yourself forward and go, you know what? I want to work on myself on a different level. Mm. I want to challenge myself. People can get so funny when you say, oh, I've stopped drinking. <gasps> what happened? Yeah, like, literally. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Well, why? Yeah. yeah. Um, it was actually really hard because I was with my friends at the beach yesterday um, and then they were like, let's, you know, let's get a carton. Let's get a drink. Let's get some drinks oh. and carton. Like they were just getting bees and like some cruises. So they all brought it down to the beach and they were like, oh, do you want one? And like they know me. They no, I'm all for it. But I was like, no, I'm okay. And I was like, but I, I don't want any of you to feel bad. And they're, they're really good people. So they're like, fuck it, I don't care. And they were just, you know, sculling their drinks. They didn't care. But it can be really hard because you don't want to come across as all like I'm health and like, you know, I'm too good for a drink. And it, that's when it comes down to who you're surrounding yourself with. And my friends are like, oh, that's fine. Like you you go, you go, babe. You do what you need to do. And yeah. we're here for you. I think exactly. The type of friends you want to be around, you know, yeah. the ones that don't go, do you want to eat a burger? Oh, I'm going to have a salad. Well, why are you having salad? No. Yeah. I have friends that actually are, like celebrate any decision you make. You know, mm. if you're wanting to pull back on certain things, then that's amazing. But we have to talk about the fitness st- stigma because it's interesting, right? Because I used to also have this element that if people saw me drinking or partying or having fun or, you know, eating certain foods, that it was like, am I a representation of what? is deemed to be healthy or fitness mm. influencer, which if I even wanted to go further with that, not all fitness influencers are healthy behind the scenes. Let's be no. real. It is, isn't it? It's so sad though. I seen someone post on their story the other day, right? And she was having like a pizza or like a burger and then her friend was having a salad and she had to clarify. She was like a trainer. She had to clarify in the story that, oh, we're sharing all of this. Mm. Who cares? Yeah. Eat that burger. That's fine. You can eat the whole thing plus a dessert. Does not mean you're not a fitness trainer. Yeah. It's interesting. And that's, I find, where you are so beautiful online. You show up as your authentic self. You express what you're going through. You're open to the challenges and hurdles you're facing. And that's what I believe is the embodiment of a true coach. Do you agree? 100%. Yeah. Like it, it, And it's all about 
being realistic and relatable. Like, and yes, like you said, putting it out there, trust me, because I've been there myself. We're not, we're not exposing and showing everything we're doing. We're going to show you what looks good. So a salad looks good, but maybe that Macca's drive through that I had on the way home didn't look that great. So I didn't post that, but you seen the salad and the juice. She's a good coach. Yeah, exactly. But like, that's why it's so important not to get so caught up into what others are doing online and to just know what is going to work for you. And that's also a big message when it comes to there is no such thing as good or bad health or food. Mm. It's what you want to make it work for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you want to have that drink on the weekend or that Wednesday wine, go for gold, hun. Are we having a wine when you finish your 75 no wine challenge? Yes, let's lock it in. A Done. wine date. I love it. It could even be online. Maybe our next podcast episode is wine time with Christian. We'll have to do a live. Yes. Mm. Actually, I would love that. I would love that. And um, everyone can come and have a wine. Come have a wine and dine. Yes. Ooh. How good. A wine live. Wow. I actually do that sometimes with my clients because um, – because I can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it's fun. Why not? And as well, like, honestly, that's when you have the best a and Like, yes. you're yes. vulnerable. Yes. The wine yes. talking. I'm yet to do it on my podcast, so hopefully <laughs> that'll come up soon. I'm so doing that a drunk episode. <sighs> Who would you pick as, uh, as, a, as a guest? I don't – I do have a guest coming onto my podcast soon, and she is like a comedian. Um, she's the best and I literally just want to bring her on just so we can have some laughs like she's like a YouTube um, TikTok comedian and she kind of based her videos around younger audience um, yeah. but she's so funny and I'd probably be her or you Del. like <laughs> oh you stop it stop it oh, or the comedian I don't know <laughs> either one Oh, this is these these chats don't go long enough, babe. I do have a I question I'm going to ask because I ask everyone this question um, to wrap it up, and that's basically if you were to give your key, your magical key that has created the life that you are in now, and you were to give this to your followers, your audience, to give advice, to give them the keys to the queendom, what would that be? Something that really resonates with me like can it be like a saying like a saying like a okay so I didn't make this up this is from Tony Robbins and it's something along the lines of pure joy is found within the act of spontaneousness Mm. and I love that because as humans we're very structured particular and sometimes just let it all go let it all go and just allow the moment to be the moment I love that. And boom, that is the keys for you girls. Thank you so much, Christy, for being a part of Keys to the Queendom. And where can everyone find you so that they can follow you, subscribe to YouTube as well? Um, Just my socials would be Christy Swadling. And then I also have my podcast, Yo Balance Co. Thank you for being here, beautiful girl. I love you so fucking much. Love you. I'm keen for our wine. 75 days from now. Or maybe I know. I don't, can't do maths, but, like, think about it. Two weeks down from 75, you guys do the maths. Whatever that equals, that's how close I am. That's when we're doing the wine live. Peace yeah. out. Peace out. Bye.